Hello everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls Remastered with Just the Bow. Today we're going to continue the adventure by heading on from beyond uh, the blacksmith Andre and heading into this forest here, whatever place this may be. we got a summon sign already here for Aaron. Looks pretty swaggy swag. Let's head on through here. Now this place is definitely a little bit scarier than the previous areas we've been in. And that's because it's a little bit darker and there's tree people and tree people suck so we're just gonna put three arrows in this guy and he's gonna die uh, the reason that tree people suck is they like to grab you and eat your face and I hope that I won't get to demonstrate that for you because it's quite terrifying and it has killed me many times before in other playthroughs so thankfully they have a lot of chance of uh, dropping these blood red moss clumps and also the purple moss clumps to deal with poison so if you need to farm those uh, before heading into a dangerous area, that's not a bad idea. So let's charge down through this way. We had two options of uh, a path to take right there, and I chose to go this way because I want to get some loot and also show you guys the thing, which I uh, didn't get to show you before because we couldn't show you there. So let's get this little crystal lizard here before he manages to zoom away, which he's doing a very good job of doing. But I think I'm stopping him a little bit each time I hit him. Nice, two large titanite shards and two twinkling night titanite all over again. That is an awesome find. Uh, I don't always get that kind of luck from the crystal lizards, so I'm happy about that. And I think we're about to get a new set of armor and also a uh, longbow and feather arrows. Nice. It's not actually a new set of armor because we started with the leather armor, but we do have a new bow, and that's exciting. So let's check it out really quick. Uh, let's scroll down here, get to the longbow, which starts at 36 damage and has uh, 136 damage. It has A scaling and dexterity as well, so it's pretty awesome. This one has S scaling now that we've ranked it up, actually the short bow plus 5 now has S scaling and dexterity, so that's why it gets even more bonus. So pretty happy about that, and uh, we'll probably end up using the longbow a little bit later on. Uh, maybe even upgrade to it over the short bow if it ends up being a little bit better. We'll have to see how it goes though. For now, we have a terrifying new night enemy to deal with. And like most enemies in this game, I have a very specific strategy for fighting him uh, with a normal weapon, but no such thing uh, for doing uh, fighting him with the bow. So hopefully we can just use a lot of easily dodgeable abilities and we can just wipe them out. That's what I'm hoping for. So far it doesn't seem too bad. It's got that little poke. Oh, and I almost rolled off the edge. Watching out for the poke there. That was definitely a poke that I didn't uh, didn't prepare for. Oh, that little uh, rushing poke he has is a little bit scary, I gotta say. Now, uh, the other strategy I would use uh, with these kind of night guys is you can get behind them and then you can just chain backstabs one after the other which is a pretty efficient way of dealing with these kind of enemies uh, alternatively you can try and backstab them off the edge which also works but is a little bit more difficult uh, because it requires you to actually get him up against an edge okay, I'm actually gonna heal right here see if I can get the whole thing nice it's good timing to avoid whatever kind of crazy jumping attack nonsense that was. Key thing with this guy is to avoid all the uh, uh, rushing attacks and then also not to fall off the edge in this uh, very small area that you have to fight him in. Okay, let's dodge left first and bait out an attack. Go for the heal and then back up. There we go. Thankfully, these big knights don't have a. Uh, uh, any kind of Estus to heal with. They just have whatever health they have and that's all they got. I figured they didn't think they'd ever need any kind of healing so or relied on some kind of support to provide them with such. Or maybe a long time ago enough of them had their own own ways to heal that they didn't even have to think about that. That was like a nice little headshot right there because he happened to move his head forward and lunge rays and my arrow came towards him. Like right there, that was also a headshot. Get to the right here so I don't get walking off the edge like I've done a million times before in my in my other playthroughs of this game. Oh, I just about walked or uh, dodged right into that, so that could have hurt a lot. 
probably shouldn't have healed there. So maybe a little bit too uh, risky of a spot to heal in, but it worked out. Sometimes that kind of stuff doesn't work out though. So it's not just because it worked out one time doesn't mean it was a good decision. You know what I mean? Let's uh, come on, hit me up with one more attack. Should be able to get you off one more. Yeah, there we go. All right, blue tight night chunk. Sometimes you can get his spear, and his spear is actually one of the better items in the game. So if you need to try and get that, good luck, because you only get a couple chances at it. The glass crush shield, which I wish if we could use shields we would use, because it uh, actually gives stamina regen, which is really nice. We have a uh, ember right here, or not ember, sorry, a bonfire. I'm not going to rest at it because I don't want to respawn any of the enemies just yet. And I also have uh, more Estus than that thing would give me anyways. So here we have uh, a shortcut, I believe. And I am going to take this one. Um, I'm going to try and get the item that I can get from here. But no guarantees. Absolutely no guarantees. Because it's a little tricky. And... Uh, I'm probably going to try and, there's there's some enemies we're about to run into, and I, I'm i going to try and fight one, and then run past the other one, so that we can at least say we defeated one, uh, because otherwise these guys are not a lot of fun to fight. So let's see, yep, this is where we thought we are, and look, drakes, and they don't take a lot of damage, they have a lot of HP, and they can spit lightning. That's supposed to make sound. The reason it's not is because the game is just kind of, oh, I don't even know if I can even fight these guys. They're not taking, like, any damage. Like, okay, that's... No, we're not fighting these guys. We're just running past them. I don't know why they're not making sound, but... Yeah, let's, uh, let's run for it. So this guy's probably going to try and hit me up with some lightning, which is fine. I'm going to get this bandit armor and spider shield here. Try and dodge this guy's spit and lightning, this guy's spit and lightning, and this guy's spit and lightning touch this ladder here and if we're fast nobody will actually be able to hit us with any of those crazy attacks going on. I really don't know why these guys aren't making sound with their lightning attacks though. It's very strange how these are all silent dragons here. But yeah, for climbing this amazing tower we get the red tear stone ring which gives us damage when our health is below a certain point which might be useful for the run and since I don't have any other rings I'm going to go ahead and wear that right now. And Normally I would jump off here and run, and maybe try and get the other treasures, but uh, for now we're actually going to just Homeward Bone out of here, because it's just just not safe enough for me to risk it. So let's get the heck out of here. And uh, yeah, I think that's the best thing to do. So we last rested here, and that's fine because I can spend some more money on some more arrows, and that's kind of why I didn't rest that at a bonfire as well. So let's actually, we're going to grab, let's see, we got quite enough souls for 200 of those. I am going to grab a few hundred wood arrows just as backup in case I end up in a spot where I need them. There we go, get 95 more of those. prefer to use standard arrows, but if I had to use wood arrows, then I'm glad to have them. Because uh, 350 of those is quite a few on hand just for more damage. And some fights in this game may end up being very long. So that's my thinking right there. And it's also better to have some ammunition, even if it's crappy ammunition, rather than no ammunition at all. Like in, in Dark Souls 3, I was sometimes uh, reduced to using like arrows that weren't appropriate for the boss fight or whatever situation I was in, like moving to dark arrows or something like that. Uh, so yeah, it's better to just have ammo. King Arthur, yeah, that's a pretty handsome guy. Disasters are gone after defeat of the Grave Lord Servant. So I really don't know what that means, but it's happening all the time. And I think it has something to do with that Grave Lording thing like I mentioned before. But I'm really going to have to like research that between episodes and find out what the heck it's all about, how I deal with it, or what it means. I think it means that there's going to be like more enemies or stronger enemies and I have to like defeat a special one of them in order to uh, get rid of whatever might be going on with my world. There's Kappa, the knight right there. What a funny guy. 
Alright, she's cool. Three arrows into you. I think I can actually attack faster than most of these things attack, so arrows work pretty well against tree people, I suppose. Aha, there is an item here. I almost missed it. Large soul of a nameless soldier. And I remember this being kind of a PvP hotspot right here. Now there is a door with a lock right here that you could open if you uh, spent 20,000 souls at um, Andre. And we do have a invisible wall right there. Or a, a hidden passage. So we can go ahead and do that. And let's rest here because I might die. So it's worth resting at this bonfire to get that quick respawn. And we have another path we can take though. So let's go down here and see what we see. Uh, there is a treasure in here. But honestly guys, hmm. This spawns... We'll do this another time. We'll do this when we never have to come back here again. Because if you see that shrub right there, and let's see, that shrub right there, they're all the same. And that's because those are all tree people that pop up when you touch that item. And after you touch that item, they always respawn, and they'll always aggro. So I'm honestly of the opinion, like, nah, if I just leave that item alone, which not it isn't that great, it's like some souls or something, then I'll never actually have to deal with that nonsense uh, ever. So I'm going to wait until I don't have to deal with that by running through here. Because there's a couple reasons to come into this place. And if I die here, it's going to really suck. So I don't know if you just heard that sound, but that was one of these tree people bursting out of the ground. So we're just going to pump him full of arrows. One more. Boom, gotcha. Give me that purple moss clump. Thank you very much. Alright, then we'll run back over here and kill this tree thing that I don't know if you saw on the tree there, but it's just lying in wait to ambush you. Very evil creature. Partisan. She's a nice little toy. You want to play around with it. Now I'm being careful around these trees because there are more of those snake people. Well, they're not snake people, I suppose. They're just snakes right now, but I have a problem with snakes and snake things. So he falls to the ground. Give him a shot and another shot. There we go. They're just weird looking too. Okay, so we're gonna dash through and grab the treasure here uh, because there are some enemies that pop out and I don't really want to deal with any of them. So let's just get that knight armor and dash, 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 dash. I think that's the only items I actually even wanted from this. There are some giant knights that I'll probably fight at some point, but not after not well surrounded with tons of enemies. Let's run in here. There's another giant knight right there. No items. There are some summon signs to grab right there if you're so, so inclined to look for some friends to play with. Uh, one of them is an NPC summon that's pretty cool and very helpful for this fight. We got Hank right here. What's up, Hank? And let's jump into this boss fight, which is my, one of my favorites, mostly because of the beautiful music. It's the Moonlight Butterfly. Now this boss can be kind of tough. Um, usually you fight it with a sword and shield so you kind of have to have some patience because it flies around a bunch and since it does that you truly don't um, get a lot of opportunities to damage it except when it puts its face down on the, uh, the area here. Oh my gosh, I could dodge just in time. That kind of scared me there. Some of these attacks, like that one, can be kind of hard to dodge. Alright, so he's coming in here to put his face down. Oh, I can't actually hit him as long as I'm locked on, so let's switch over to this. The cool thing about... Oh, he's actually healing right now. I didn't know I actually came down and healed. Uh, but the cool thing about this guy is that he uh, has a lot of cool spells... And he only does that like small window to damage him usually. Uh, his attacks can be pretty interesting to try and dodge. Uh, he doesn't seem like a very challenging boss, but he can be. Oh, and this is an interesting attack. Oh, he's doing that super bomb. He just bombed me on the field there. Try and hope my heal goes off. Okay, I'm gonna heal again. Alright. Some of these attacks, you can't ever really tell which one he's going for. Try and get away from that right away. You see him starting to fly over and he's going to look like he's going to bomb you. Just get the heck out of there. 
that triple shot like this, I like to just lure it and then roll towards it or beside it because he uh, it zooms in on you and if you don't let it zoom in or home in on you then you're usually fine. So let's just pump damage, just eat damage, stop healing. Seems like I can recover all my stamina between shots so I can just continuously pump damage into this guy. Which is nice for me. I'm just gonna keep doing it. Oh, I tried to dodge that second hit there, but or that first hit. Oh, and then he's doing this one. This one's kind of tough to dodge. Yeah, I screwed that up. I should have just kept shooting at him. Oh my gosh! If I had been hit by those right there, that would have possibly been the end of it. Did we get him here? Yeah, there we go. Should have gone for that a while back. Whew, but that's the moonlight butterfly. Pretty fun fight. I always look forward to fighting that boss. Get a humanity, which is awesome. And 10,000 souls, which is a pretty hefty amount for, for that boss, considering he's not, not too tough. But very fun. Kind of killed me the first few times trying to learn how to dodge those attacks, but once you figure it out, then it's not too bad. I did use all my Estus, so I mean, clearly I can't dodge all of them yet. Get the Watchtower Basement Key, and the Divine Ember, and a Homeward Bone to quickly get home. So we actually are going to use that Homeward Bone because all those enemies are riled up and I have no Estus left. But we're going to go back and we're going to take a second pathway uh, from this point. There's actually another path we can take. It's kind of hidden, but we're going to do it. And I'm not quite sure which path I want to take after that. There's a few places I could go. And I'm kind of trying to decide. So hopefully by the time we uh, need to do that, I'll know what I'm doing. But here we have uh, a tree that takes damage, and as you can see, you can't uh, can't get past it. Um, but if you look at this roots, it is wiggling, and it does turn and stuff like that. So it's very much a living tree or a creature of some kind. And when it dies, and it turns into goo, blows up, gives you souls, and goes away. So, don't really know what's up with those trees. Um, I don't really know if there's some lore to it or what, but it's kind of freaky. And there's another one too. These guys are kind of cool. They can give you, um, I can't remember what item they can give you, but it's pretty handy. This one I think turns, maybe, no? But the cool thing about this one is you don't actually have to kill it. You can just go past it. So, I don't really know why one tree has to be a pain in the butt and the other one's just like, yo man, I'm just hanging out. But I'm not gonna waste the arrows on a cool guy like that. Let's see. Uh, there's a knight right there who is gonna stand up because I walked close to him. And he does take a lot of damage and he does have a lot of armor and he does deal a lot of damage. And he also has some little greebly friends that are... Oh my gosh, he took like two steps towards me it was just like on top of me that was crazy I didn't realize he'd have so much uh, distance for attacking I don't actually know if I've ever been hit by one of these uh, these little guys so I don't know if they have any kind of status effects or what but their attacks are definitely interesting they try and lick you just get you just think you're low yep boop I think these guys drop like uh, that green moss or something that you can use to regen stamina. I think that's why they're cool. Oh, if he got his shield up again. Come on, man. Oh yeah, and uh, another thing I don't know if I mentioned before about humanity, but when you have humanity, it actually increases your item discovery, which is like your item drop chance. Um, so when you're fighting normal enemies, and you can unlock or get them to drop some of the items that they carry. It increases the chance of getting stuff that's a little bit more rare. So that's pretty handy. There we go, got him. Nothing cool except for 600 souls from him, which is fine. That'll be a good way to help restock my standard arrow situation. Because I definitely like having standard arrows. They fly good, deal good amounts of damage. They're definitely better than wood arrows. The wood arrows are good. Yeah, green blossoms, that's what they drop. And those give a uh, pretty decent stamina regeneration, if I remember correctly. 
I don't think we'll end up using any in this playthrough because stamina doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue for me, but they are pretty handy. So we have to climb these stairs now, and there are more giants up here, but we're just going to skip past them. Be wary of back, yeah. People don't know that knight's going to be sneaking up on them as long with those little greebly dudes. Someone's standing here, getting their nerve up for the challenge up ahead. And so we're going to go ahead and grab the wolf ring, which is awesome. And then we're going to jump, and then we're going to run, and we're hopefully going to make it to the bonfire without dying. We're just going to keep running. Can we do it? Uh, i got to wait for a little bit of stamina. They're definitely still chasing me. I can hear them back there. Can we make it? Nope. We are going to have to deal with the tree people. Oh my gosh. Such a pain in the butt, these tree people. i got to tell you. I don't know any single person that actually likes these guys. But bam, bam, and bam. Maybe give me a moss clump. I didn't even get any moss clumps for that. What rude people. Alright, let's rest up this bonfire here. And uh, so wow, we've gotten all the treasure there. I'll show you the wolf ring since it's a new, new ring we got. It boosts poise, which is pretty nice. Allows you to take a hit and keep going. So we're actually going to use that instead of the defensive ring so that if I get hit while pulling the arrow back I might be able to maintain my position and power through it shoot him in the face uh, yeah 12,000 not quite enough to open that door there is another way to get there but it's a little bit a little bit challenging so I'm not sure if we should go there first or if we should go go down to the other place first so let's think let's think let's think hmm well we've got a little bit of time left in the episode here so I think I'm gonna head back get some more arrows and then uh, oh this is not a good spot to be in please don't do anything there we go I worked got through and then I think we're gonna go I think hmm, hmm I feel like the medic Katarina right now I'm like uh, hmm, don't really know which path exactly I want to take I think we're gonna take the more standard path and not go out of order of things so yeah we're not going to go back to the forest for now but we will go back there later because uh, there is a couple more things I want to show you guys we're going to do it a little bit more in order oh yeah and this is where we can give this guy his divine number that we just got thanks for that you've made a fine decision you soon shall see and that's what allows us to do this modifying equipment thing. So we can do uh, divine with uh, a green titanite shard. Oh, I guess you can infuse bows in here. I totally forgot about that. So yeah, that's something we can use in this playthrough. I'm excited now. And uh, first we have to... Actually, how many titanite shards will we need? We need like one, one, two, two, and three. So that's like six, nine, nine of these. So can I get nine? Or would that be most of my souls? We can get nine. Let's do it. Can I try upgrading the longbow here? One, two, three, four, five. All right, we got the longbow upgraded, so that's awesome. And I'm just going to spend the rest on standard arrows and whatever I had left. My last two, or my last six souls on uh, some wood, wooden arrows. So let's see, can we actually equip both these bows? That way I can have them both on hand because let's see oops that's not what I meant to do sorry so this one has is there where you can see like the shot range I thought you could see the shot range somewhere hmm maybe not I thought there was a way Oh yeah, shot range 50. Oh, okay, it is 50. Never mind, it's on the actual stats under attack where you can see the physical changing. Uh, the shot range is still 50 for both of them, just above that. So they both have the same scaling. The longbow is slightly more damage, weighs a little bit more, uh, but because it does more damage, I am going to probably use that more often than the short bow. But we'll see. Maybe the longbow will be too unreliable uh, to do. So let's uh, head on over here. And I think we're going to take the intended path for the game, which means we need to head back to the shrine and then go into the catacombs. Or no, actually, sorry, we need to go down to Blighttown. 
it's always always a tough time for me to remember how exactly do I get to Blight Town. I know that there's a key that I need. Let me just check my items here. This is always a part of the game that I've always been like, uh, what is it? It's not the dungeon cell. Do I have to go back to... Oh, the Watchtower Basement. That's the one I wanted. Okay, so we do have the key to get there. So you know what? For the rest of this episode, we're going to head and get the rest of the treasure here that I missed before. And then next time, we're going to go to where that key will take us and head down to the next area we're going to explore. But first off, got to deal with this guy here. Each going to shoot each other, and then he's going to have a friend get a little bit mad at me. Whoa, man. Yeah, Longbow seems pretty good. Just as reliable as the, uh, the short bow. Bam, right in the face. Gotcha. Right in the gut on that second one. There's the dragon remains again. Ooh, that sword is massive and scary. Man, some people have really made some progress in this game very quickly. Definitely better than I ever could, I think. Well, I don't know. Maybe I could try one day, but I don't know, I'm doing my bow thing. Alright, we got a headshot there. Oh. Oh, man. I didn't realize it's going to make two of you guys mad at the same time. That's not what I wanted. I don't like fighting you guys to begin with, let alone two on one. You do have not much health, though, so that's pretty nice. This guy's got a shield up. Come on, man. Swing at me. Yeah, there you go. Boop. And boop. Gotcha. And we get the Balder shield, which is a pretty nice shield. That's the one that they're wielding, of course. Oh, shoot. He did see me. This guy's a pretty sneaky guy. Oh, that was a brutal face shot right there. Jump back, and he's probably going to go for an Estus. No, no Estus. All right. Seems good, man. Oh, man. Now he's going for the Estus. Gotcha. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I thought it was going to be worse. And nothing else to deal with there, I don't think. I do hear footprints, but it could just be my own. Sometimes I scare myself. Got a halberd there. Pretty good item. Might sell it for souls if I need to. Oh, I didn't even see this guy here. Hey, man. Right in the face on that one. There you go. Basement key. That's another thing that I may have needed. Where does the basement go? Watchtower basement and basement. Oh, am I confused? I might be confused. I might be confused. But yeah, we open that gate, and that's mostly just a shortcut back. But you know what? I said we were going to end there, but now that I have that basement key, I'm actually thinking there may be one more fight that we can do. Uh, but you know what? It's probably going to be a really long fight, and I'm probably going to die. So I think we are going to save it for another time. Uh, not too far in the future, though. I may go run there next time. Uh, not sure. I'll have to think about it. Basically, we've got more options than I realized at this point, and I'm not quite sure which direction I want to go. So we're going to hang down at this bonfire for now, and uh, I'll think about what I want to do for next time, and then I'll make it happen, and we'll go take on more adventure. So I hope you enjoyed this guy's episode, uh, or I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys, and I hope you stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching, and bye for now.